Okay. And so here is our first helicopter deformation. Yeah, it's pretty loose. Um, you know, it doesn't like fall apart very much, of course. But anyway, it technically works. You can see the constraints in action. We can see the squishiness of it. And uh, yeah, it's working. It's technically working. We can also see that the top here does not um, does not come apart. It stays uh, in its glue form. So that's, that's good too. So cool. So that's looking pretty good. We could also change some things. You know, there's, we're gonna like, we're gonna tweak a lot of those actual values. But one of the main things I wanna fix with this is that it all stays together as one blob. At the very least, I think it's smart to consider that the different chunks that this helicopter is already in would probably be, you know, maybe welded or something together like that. And perhaps might be already a naturally occurring uh, weak point. So I would like the helicopter to be likely to fall apart in those areas. Again, meaning I want these pieces to be glued. Like I want this big chunk here to be glued to this chunk here so that that can break off. But this, the deformations, all the soft constraints will just be little islands where all the, all the constraints within this big chunk are soft constrained to itself, but not to this next chunk over here. Now we can do that uh, built in. Again, that's one of the nice things about using these is there's this thing here called use clusters. If we turn it on, there's remove difference, keep difference. The difference is referring to the cluster attribute. We're going to make an attribute per chunk of these things. And we'll say, if this is cluster five, and this is cluster six, you'll it'll make all the constraints at once. You know, it'll make them all. Uh, where are your constraints? Man, it is loud out there. Oh, it's because I have the cluster on. <laughs> it will make all the constraints at once and then remove them. It will remove them where it, they would be spanning geometry of two different cluster values. Now, one of the catches, though, is that we have to actually make this cluster attribute be a float value, which is kind of annoying because <laughs> You know, we already have. What, what could our cluster value be? It could just be the original name of these pieces. You know, the, these pieces all had names, remember? Back up here. So, you know, we can't do that, apparently. So we need to make a float value from each one of those. We could make a random value from each one of those unique uh, string names, but on the off chance that we get two of the same random numbers, I'm just gonna not do it. So to ensure that this works correctly, I'm gonna say, you know, by here maybe, you know, we've got our, our pieces. Later, again, we're gonna like art direct some fractures in here, but more or less by here, let's store, make a primitive Wrangler. Let's store the original name. So I'll say so a new attribute called come on s at name cluster is equal to the original name. So then when it goes into this Voronoi fracture here, I'm gonna put it in manual mode for a second so it doesn't actually do this. We can say append could append a this piece to the original name. But the point is mostly that we're gonna have a new name based on the Voronoi name. So it'll be like, say it was fuselage chunk A. Now it'll be fuselage chunk A piece one, piece two, piece three. But we'll still, even though the name will have changed, we're still going to know what the name originally was in the form of that name cluster. And so now we'll also have to do after that is actually create a float attribute based on that. So we'll do that in a minute. Let's let this run. Oh, 
Yeah. See, every time I threaten to pause it, it, it just finishes all of a sudden. I like that. That's great. So let's save that, reload it, make sure that we have it. And then I'll say, like I said, we're going to keep moving this, the rest of this stuff down here as we add more things. It doesn't really matter necessarily where we do this, but uh, I'm going to do it here. Let's make a for each um, loop. And we'll say, instead of working on name, work on name cluster. There's probably maybe even a better way of doing it than this, but this is what comes to mind. So you can see each iteration of this loop is going to be one value of name cluster. So it's still many different pieces. They all have their new names now, as I was saying. The original name, underscore, piece, whatever. But the original name is the same for all of them, as you can imagine. So what I want to do is say, if we've got 82 iterations for you know each unique value of name cluster, let's make the current iteration value be the cluster value. So create a meta import node here. This has this will store as a detail attribute the current iteration that we're on while we're inside this for loop. So I'm going to say primitive wrangler. Like so, and we'll say uh, I at cluster, or I guess it actually had to be a float attribute. So cluster value will equal whatever the current iteration is. So like so. So detail, meaning get me the detail attribute from the first input, meaning this one, because it's being stored here, remember, and we want the one called iteration. So it only takes a moment to do, and we can see if I were to go into selection mode here, I can look at the cluster instead, and you can see they all have different values based on whatever the iteration happened to be. And so there you go. So now we have a cluster attribute. You just put that like so. And now if we come down to our RBD constraints from rules, let's let's test it. So cluster. And remember we're doing remove difference. So now can I tell if it worked or not? It's kind of hard to tell, right? Let's see. If I look at the constraints here, still can't really tell. The best way to test whether this worked or not is to not do delete differences, but keep difference. Even though it's remove difference is what we want, keep difference will actually show us whether it actually worked. Doesn't seem like it did. I would expect the constraints to be clustered, you know, in the spaces between these things, like right here, for example. So the reason why it didn't work is because the way it's doing it is there has to be a difference greater than the tolerance. For some reason, the tolerance is set to zero by default. So you need to give it some tiny value in order for it to see that difference. So now, if we look, we can see, aha, look at that. Now these look like the welds between the major chunks of our helicopter. So you need a tiny value here for this to work. Um, and again, we don't want keep difference. We want to remove the difference. We want the clusters to just, we want the constraints to just be within these pieces and not actually constrained to each other. Later, we will constrain them to each other with just, you know, a simple glue, but a breakable glue. So that's pretty much it. Um, let's actually see. We should see these pieces all be floppy deforming pieces, but they should not, you know, many of them should fall away from each other. Some may not just because they're wedged into each other already, but um, let's just see what we get and then we can talk about it.